If you travel just three miles north of Fincastle on U.S. Route 220, you will come across Top of the Morn Farm. Top of the Morn Farm is a horse farm by all accounts, according to the owner, Candace Poling. However, there you will find a menagerie of animals you would find on many farms. A wide variety of chickens, guinea fowl, burrows, as well as a plethora of wildlife that call the farm home. Candace, a CPA by trade, and her husband, an optometrist, moved to Fincastle, Virginia in 2003, raising their three children and sending them off to college from the Botetot County school system. Having lived in other parts of the country, Candace and her husband have experienced rapid uncontrolled development before, and the pollings are concerned that they are seeing it happen once again in Botetot County. We call it Top of the Morn Farm, although it's not a formal name because we ended up here because of a horse whose name was Top of the Morn. <laughs> We liked it here mainly because we had two middle school age boys um, and we liked the schools. You know, Roanoke, we weren't, we didn't want to live in town. We, did, we wanted to live out in the country in a rural area. I'm going to support Don Obenshane because I have been to the Board of Supervisors meetings and frankly I was appalled at how people were treated. Um, I've never seen anything like that in my life. I'm, I've never been really involved in politics. I've always voted. I've always paid attention. But to go somewhere and have every citizen speak against something and have developers speak for it and they literally blow the citizens off and just ignore us. You can email them. You don't get a response. You, you know, it's just been very sad to me that they, it's like they've forgotten who they work for. And I want somebody in there that, that number one, values the rural area that we have and the agriculture that will help promote maybe agritourism, um, things like that versus selling off the farms to these big developers who come and create their mess and leave. I feel like, like I said, I think he's, he's a farmer. He is, he likes agriculture. You know, he's, he, he's, he's got a wide, varied background too. So he's, he's not just a farmer. You know, he's got a lot of experience in, in the business world um, and dealing with people. He listens. Um, I really, you know, I feel like in his one of his campaign promises is that he will talk to people and respond to people. And um, right now we're not getting that. We don't see that at all. And you get to these meetings and you feel like the decision's already been made before you step in the door. So what's the point? I could use some decent internet, but we've been skipped over for years for all that. Yeah. Um, which is very frustrating. One of the reasons we bought, I didn't want to live on a four lane highway. Um, especially with animals, but one of the reasons we bought here was because we, we assumed we would be one of the first to get decent internet coming from Florida where we already had high-speed internet. We had cable internet in 2003 in Florida, um, and we lived in the middle of nowhere. So we just, you know, naturally assumed we'd be one of the first, and we were skipped for DSL for the first round, um, and so far we haven't seen any high-speed internet. <laughs> And this whole, you know, the overlay thing that they did, that just blew my mind. It's like, and that came, for most of us, that came out of nowhere. We had no clue that that was even a thing. I've watched places I love be ruined, and I don't want that to happen here. And I think a lot of the locals, yeah, I respect, you're born here, you're raised here, I get it. But they haven't seen what we've seen. And you open that door, and it's a Pandora's box, and you can't close it once it's open. Me, all it does is benefit them. It doesn't benefit us. Why do we have that? I'm Don Obenchain, and I approve this message.